Hello, I'm Ben, DivKid, and welcome to this video on faking reverb with ring modulation using Rob Hordyke's poor man's delay technique. We'll look at things that have kind of led to this video shortly, but here's a preview of what's to come. Is there an echo? Is there an echo? So this came up recently in my Superbooth 2025 patch tips video where Chris from Moog shared some ring modulation love and referenced this idea. Hey, I'm Chris from Moog and my synth tip is to use ring modulators. And you can also do a little uh, trick that I learned from the, uh, from, from the dearly departed Rob Hordyke, which was to use ring mod to uh, simulate reverb. And rightly so, that sparked some attention and intrigue with people wanting to understand the technique. You can't throw around the idea of making reverb with ring modulation without some questions and call for examples. So here we are. Before we get further into this technique, this is a better bleeps series video. Better bleeps is a series of videos that aims to share techniques and ideas for improving our bleeps and beeps. Whether that's a synthesis and sound design technique, a music production or even composition technique. It's not about any one piece of gear and this video isn't sponsored by anyone else. So what is Rob Hordyke's poor man's delay technique? Well, back in 2017, we were holding events as Modular Meet here in the UK. And that year we hosted Rob Hordyke who gave a performance, a Rungler workshop, but also a general presentation and synthesis tutorial on his modular system. That video is linked below. I highly suggest watching all of it. But 34 minutes in, Rob talks about using ring modulators and using them like VCAs, and then that led to him showing this technique of giving a fake echo or reverb. This is also uh, quite interesting because if I don't modulate it with a uh, like sine wave or a triangle wave, but I give it a um, an, uh, an envelope signal. <coughs> make the envelope a bit shorter then if I turn to the right you always hear a bit of signal but now I turn it to the left is there an echo is there an echo and I love that look around the room is there an echo is there a reverb and in the room, it really was quite evocative. It really felt like some ambience had been added to the sound. Rob then goes on to tell us why this technique works. The reason why that happens is because I now basically sync my envelope a little bit through silence and a soft sound that is in inverse phase is heard after the envelope. And our mind thinks, oh, it's an inverse phase. It must come from another direction. So this is a total... Uh, psychoacoustic effect that happens in our head. It doesn't really happen here, it happens in our head. But it's, uh, I like it very much, it's fun. I call it uh, the poor man's delay. <laughs> and just to say RIP to Rob, who sadly passed away in 2022. So let's break this down and build a patch and I'll stick to using similar sequence sounds to Rob here. And remember, it's about the technique and not specific pieces of gear. You'll need an oscillator. A triangle wave is a nice place to start. Ideally, you can pitch sequence that, and you'll need an envelope which you can mix with a negative offset, and a ring modulator that you can control those sounds with. We'll start with Eclipse here, and take a triangle wave into the scope so you can see what's happening. And I'm going to use Manic here, my module with Apollo View, as it's really flexible for unipolar and bipolar ring mod-like behaviors. Again, lots of other things will work well though. Patching its output into the scope, and note, I've made the blue trace here, the output bigger on the scope, so it's a bit clearer. This isn't going to be any louder in level than the green trace going in. So this being a standard unipolar VCA, if I add some level, in phase, normal triangle wave. If I turn this into a multiplier, like a ring modulator, which is a bipolar VCA, and I flick this down into bipolar mode, 
now have silence in the central position and the ability to add positive gain above and wrap through zero, through silence in that mid position there. Remembering this is just a manual level control and going through zero into an inverted negative level control. So we have positive gain above. Notice these are the same in phase wave. And negative gain below. Notice the peaks and troughs are flipped here. This is a phase inverted output in this negative state. If we go to unipolar mode again, and we add, let's say, a sequence to the oscillator, got a pre-prepared five-step sequence here, and I gate an envelope and take the envelope here to modulate level. This is now unipolar, so a standard VCA, turning up the modulation. Super basic triangle through a VCA. Now going bipolar, like a ring mod again, we'll first silence in the middle, and then add modulation, and it sounds exactly the same. But the trick that Rob was showing us is to actually take this to an inverted state. So I'm just going to add a little bit of manual negative level here. And there we have a fake reverb. Or a poor man's delay, as Rob puts it. I think this is amplified with some more harmonics. I'm going to add a little bit of FM. And the envelope shape. And the amount of manual negative offset you add. We'll take this from a kind of ducking effect if you go too far. Standard VCA if there's not enough. And then we get that kind of fake reverb like a reflection coming off the nose. And if I patch out of the second channel here on Manic, I can set this as a unipolar VCA and the inputs and modulation normalize. So I can quickly AB from standard VCA to ring mod or bipolar VCA where it just comes into a softer negative state in between the notes. This effect, as Rob states, is entirely psychoacoustic and in our heads, a sound going through silence and then appearing again softer, quieter and out of phase, makes our senses believe the sound is coming from somewhere else, bouncing off a surface in a room for example. So this isn't a big ambient dream machine, apologies if you feel let down that you maybe thought it was, but I think this works a lot better in a room with speakers rather than headphones, and I distinctly remember the feeling that this gave me over a large PA system with Rob's presentation, and as he says, I think it works surprisingly well. One thing though, if I stop this sequence, this will just bleed through at this slight negative level rather than cutting to silence, and you could address that with a VCA after this, just so that the sound stops when your sequence stops. Hello, editing Ben here. Just quickly, I wanted to let you know that over on patreon.com forward slash divkid, there's an extended version of this video with three extra patches. One of which is using a reverb plugin to try and dial in the sound of the fake reverb with an actual reverb and see how close they are. And then there's two more modular patches, one with an extended subtractive patch where we kind of explore whether it works or doesn't. And then a polyphonic string-like sound that absolutely doesn't work with this technique at all, but it does lead to an interesting effect that I'm calling a sidechain sustain. And I think that's really quite an effective thing to explore. Patreon.com forward slash divkid if you'd like access to those. And remember, there's a free download of a PDF and a VCV patch, which is coming up in a moment. But first, let's explore this in four other modules just to really reinforce this technique and that it's not about any one specific piece of gear.
Bye for now. Let's patch this with some other modules. It isn't specific to Manic, although it was really handy in this case. And we'll do this by patching our envelope into a mixer that you can just see on the top of the screen here. And we'll come out of the mixer. Let's try, say, the Instro Vinca. So patching our triangle wave as our input, our mixer as our modulator, and outputting this sound. Hitting play again. Now with just the envelope coming through, this works like a VCA. This is a bipolar VCA if you don't know the module. And if I add some offset here in the mix, we get that wrapping through zero kind of fake reverb again. If we take an even more basic ring mod, which typically would just be three sockets, an X and a Y input, and an XY multiplied input, there's one here on the CLFO from Atov, but you can patch in audio. So let's patch the X input as our sequenced oscillator, a modulator from the mixer, and there's no controls for this. This is just a kind of true simple ring mod, X, Y, and X multiplied by Y as an output here. With no offset and just the envelope coming in, like a VCA, if we negatively offset, again, you can hear this kind of poor man's delay. To quickly do this on a couple of other things, we could say take Ouija from Nekia circuits, input from the oscillator, modulator from the offset envelope, and ring mod out. There's a bit more of a saturated sound from this. Which may or may not be desirable, but again you can hear it works. And finally, we could take, say, the Bifaco A times B plus C, which is super flexible and you wouldn't need an offset module to do this, but let's just keep it simple. A input from the oscillator, B input from the offset envelope, and output one here. Again, no offset like a VCA. And a bit of echo letting this phase invert through zero. Here's VCV rack and here's a free version you can download, PDF version to kind of explain what's going on, although there's notepads in there as well to explain what's going on. Let's hit run on the sequence. The top row is my pitch sequence into the quant for the oscillator. Oscillator into the bottom channel of A times B plus C here, which is a multiplier or a ring mod it's multiplying the triangle out of the VCO with this envelope. The envelope is triggered by the sequencer into the top channel of ABC first where I'm going to add some negative offset from this 1F slider just to add a simple control to it. So as I bring that up, you can hear that fake reverby slap back poor man's delay trail between the notes. And you can see there on the scope, it's this negative region we're dipping into, again, that's creating this effect. Now, another reason for using 1F was that when you're actually kind of dipping the envelopes below zero, you're losing some of their shape. So I just added a slight modulation, and I found 4% was enough to do that from this voltage. So as it ducks down and is offset with some negative voltage, it just increases the release time a bit. Now you could do much more creative things here than this basic example. You could say take a roll of sequences into the 1F. So the first four envelopes are normal, the next four dip down. Kind of dipping in and out of this effect. So be creative with it and have a play around. Now, if you've got this far in the video, drop a hard sync down in the comments. I hope you found this as fascinating as I did and that you weren't expecting some black hole-esque huge ambience out of a ring modulator. I don't think that's possible, even though I've tried a few different things to get there myself. Give this a try and I hope it leads to some better bleeps 
patreon.com forward slash divkid to support what I do. Let me know if you'd like more of these videos and I'll see you next time. Bye.